What's up guys, how's everybody doing today? My name is Nathan Ng again from Pro Guides and we're gonna be answering the question that you guys are asking a lot, how to play more like the pros. We see this question constantly in the comments and while you can't really match their awe-inspiring aim without years of dedication, there are countless tricks that you can easily replicate in your own gameplay. Whether you're just starting out on the ranking ladder or you're an experienced veteran, there's always more to learn about the ins and outs of CSGO. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the 10 countless things that pro players do every single round. Starting off at the beginning of the round, something that you'll see almost every pro player do is to make sure that they buy smartly. They'll see how much money they have and think over what they're going to buy before they actually buy it, prioritizing things such as armor and a rifle before utility and upgraded pistols. This is especially important on CT side for two main reasons. First, of which being head armor. If you're short on cash and the terrorists have AKs, then you need to realize that there's little point in getting a helmet anyway, because one bullet is going to do you in. Secondly, you should always have at least one defuse kit. As you'd imagine, this will drastically enhance your chances to win a round. Just take a moment to think about how many rounds you've lost in the past due to the simple reason of not having a defuse kit. As good as 5 M4s is, it's no better than 4 M4s and somebody with a kit. Your team will definitely thank you if you get one and it makes a difference, and you'll rarely see a professional round go by without at least one kit, even on Ecos. Now that you've bought up, you need to think about what your plan is for the coming round. Try to make sure that you go into every single round with at least a vague idea of what you're trying to do. Planning is key if you want to be an elite at CS. This can be an individual plan or a team plan, but either way, you have to make sure that you know what you're going to do before you even do it. This eliminates any indecisiveness in the round, something that will only ever be a detriment to you. Not knowing your game plan in a certain round will more often than not mean that your mind is thinking about what to do next, rather than focusing on the present. And in that time, it's highly likely that an enemy peeking out will eliminate you from the round or you won't simply be able to concentrate when you push somewhere. In short, make sure to know what you're doing and that you don't have to think about it. You can focus your attention on aiming instead of being divided between aiming and what you're going to do. At number three, we've got changing what you're doing every round. This applies to both sides and the way in which you should implement it on each side doesn't really vary too much. On T side, this largely consists of changing the strats that you and your team execute each and every round, changing from basic mid control to just rushing B. A key aspect of this is changing the pace of how you play. Majority of the rounds, you want to be playing relatively slowly, taking control of the map piece by piece. However, changing the pace of the game can definitely catch the CTs off guard, as over the past few rounds, they've gotten used to how you control the pace of the game and playing it very slowly. Individually, you will also want to be able to change it up every single round. Try to be as unpredictable as you try to force the CTs to adapt constantly. On the other side of the coin is how you change things up while playing the CT side. This, as with T-Side, is once again split into changing how you play individually and as a team. As with the T-Side, try and mix up what positions you play. Make sure you get aggressive some rounds, whether that's just a quick peek somewhere or just taking a large chunk of the map away from the T's. An ever-evolving CT is the hallmark of any CS pro. Continuing on to number 4, and that's making sure that you don't play too aggressively. Even though aggression is necessary on some rounds as it can easily beg you a round win, playing overly aggressive is one of the most common mistakes that there is. And if you watch any professional game, it'll be hard to miss seeing how passively they play on some rounds. This is more of a case of finding the right balance for you than anything else, as being too aggressive will most likely cost you the round. If the enemy team gets used to you being so aggressive every single round, they'll simply start to exploit it by counter stratting you. However, if you do play aggressively, make sure that you change up how you're aggressive. Don't push the same old place every single round and, you know, of course there is no better option than a good old B rush. Halfway now at number 5, we got taking map control. The process of taking map control is what all professional teams base their game plans on. All the way from teams from Navi to NIP. It's one of the fundamentals of the more strategic side of the game, which is something that you've got to get a good understanding of if you really want to boost your gameplay to the elite level. Having a good portion of map control every single round grants you a multitude of options on how to play the round on T side, and if you manage to take one key area away from the terrorists on the CT side, then you'll definitely mess with their game plan. This will most likely result in a disjointed and badly planned round for them. To put this into practice, when you're on the T side, just try to take a bit more time to take over certain areas of the map, such as apartments on Inferno or connector on Mirage. And if you're on CT side, some great bits of map control to take are B on Overpass or outside on Nuke. However, the list doesn't end there. Even taking an area that seems insignificant as Pop Dog will massively increase your chances of getting the round. You will cause the terrorists to waste more time trying to clear you out, and come the retake, a position like this can be hugely beneficial. Jumping on the sixth thing that every pro does every single round, and that's communicating. 
Communicate with your team as much as you can about things like economic situations on each team, what you should do this round, or what you think the enemies are going to do this round. And that's just the important things to mention in freeze time. Mid round calling based off the info that your team has gathered is instrumental to success, and is what separates decent professional teams from great ones like Astralis. Try to talk to your teammates about what has happened in the round and come to an agreement together on what you guys should do, whether that's rotating or just saving. Try to be clear and concise when you give info, just say how many enemies there are and where they are, as you don't ever want to overuse the comms. This will mask any sound cues for you and your teammates. This is particularly important when you're dead. Simply just let your team play, no one likes a backseat gamer. Coming in at number 7, we've got faking rounds. Now notice how I didn't say faking bomb sites here? This is because thinking that bomb site rushes can be faked is an extremely narrow minded approach to the game. Smokes coming onto either site will pull rotates over, so will faking mid presence. This isn't to say that faking bombsite isn't a good thing as well, a good site fake can be all the difference in winning new rounds, especially if you use it at the right time. For example, if your teammates have been finding great success on hitting A on a number of rounds, a few nades and one or two people running onto the site will likely pull the rotates from B, due to how you condition the CTs to expect A hits so much. And now at number 8, it's all about asserting your authority. You can't play too scared and you've got to take fights and make things happen yourself. There's little reason playing a game of CS if 90% of the time you're just sitting back and letting the round play out until the last 30 seconds. You need to take risk and make things happen more. While trading kills are crucial, it's just as crucial for opening picks, entry frags, and taking the map control assertively. Make sure that you're never just waiting in one place for more than 20 or so seconds and always be on the move, looking for a pick, finding some information, or supporting your teammates. You can't ever just hope for the best and pray that things go well, and you've got to try to make things happen in the early part of each round if you want to get those favorable situations for your teammates. This all ties into something that we've glossed over in previous videos, and that's having an impact. Every pro player in every role will have a significant impact each round. Whether that's just them getting entry frags or being the support player that enables the entry fragger to get those opening kills, you'll rarely see a round go by where a professional doesn't have a significant impact on that round. Being authoritative and leading commanding plays leads to the lack of indecisiveness and a boost in confidence. Nearly finished out with number 9, and that's going to be making sure that you play with your teammates in all situations, ranging from retakes to rushes. CSGO at its core is a team game, and once again, brilliant teamwork is what sets good teams apart from outstanding teams. A key part of teamwork in CSGO is always making sure that you're in a position where you can take trades with your teammates when pushing somewhere. And the same goes when you're pushing in first. Don't go in solo and give the enemy any easy kills. Stick together and watch each other's backs and always get revenge for a fallen comrade. It's astronomically easier for your enemies to get 5 kills on individuals than it is for them to kill one unit of 5. This element of teamwork applies in every aspect of the game however and not just pushing. That means you guys need to buy together, and you guys need to use your utility as a team. This means communicating on who's going to smoke and molly what, to make sure that you don't waste any precious grenades double smoking the same spot. But most importantly, you guys need to win together. And finally at number 10 is making sure that you're always keeping economy in mind. As stated earlier, the economy in-game is crucial to what you have to buy each round and can easily determine how that round will play out. But even after freeze time, you still need to consider both your and the opposing team's economy. To start with, let's go ahead and talk about bomb plants. Getting a plant bomb in the round can be a difference between taking a full buy or an eco in the next, making them a extremely important to get if you're on the T side, and b equally important to try to prevent when you're on the CT side. It's well worth risking dying to try and stop the bomb from going down. It's also just as worth it to play the round out with the sole intention of planting the bomb. Just as important as bomb plants is saving when you need to. Saving a few guns over the next round could give your team a much improved chance of winning when it's compared to the chance of you winning a 2v4. But beware, just as crucial to winning the game is being able to stop people from saving. The next time you know that the enemies are going to be saving a rifle or two, leave someone guarding the bomb and try to hunt them down. Finding and taking the guns out of their hands all but assures you another round win. Now before we close out, let's go ahead and have a quick recap of the 10 things that pros should do every round. 1. Buy smart and don't waste money. 2. Plan your course of action each and every round. 3. Mix up what you're going to do round by round and keep your enemies guessing. 4. Try not to be over aggressive. 5. Methodically take map control. 6. Communicate. 7. Take out the enemy. 8. Play with authority and assertiveness. 9. Play with your teammates. 10. Always keep economy in mind. We've watched endless hours of pro games to pick up these tips so that you guys don't have to. And when implementing them into your competitive play, you'll quickly see a huge gap in ability formed between you and the other people in your games. And your teammates will love you for it. 
Anyways, that's gonna be it from us here at Pro Guides, but it doesn't have to be. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for regular videos all about CSGO. And hop over to ProGuides.com to watch simple masterclasses or hire your own personal coach. That's gonna be it for me today. Guys, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a wonderful day. Peace.